Question three goes like this. The thing that I cannot understand in many humans is the constant seeking for a purpose in things. They seek a purpose for the existence of the universe, a purpose for their own existence, a purpose for natural events such as earthquakes. I suspect this is related to a need for a susceptibility to a need for or susceptibility to religion, an elaborate system of myths, supernatural beings, and other modes of existence such as an afterlife. Is there some evolutionary advantage in this? I tend to think most humans are irrational, and, uh, but since I seem to be outnumbered, am I abnormal, uh, is the question. So this, uh, the essence of that question is why do we always seek purposes? Uh, which seems to be so uniquely human. Um, and is there any biological reason for this? Uh, my answer to that question is yes, indeed, there is a biological reason for it. If you think about what I said in response to question two, that the whole purpose of us having minds is for us to be able to meet uh, the demands uh, posed by our feelings, to meet our needs, that is, uh, in the outside world. Um, the, the, the whole task of the mind is to find out how the world works in relation to this question, how do I meet my needs there? That's what it's all about. That's why we need to know how the world works. And to put it in slightly different words, that means we have to find the hidden causes for things. We have to find why things happen the way that they do. And we have to have predictions about what I need to do in order to be able to meet my needs in the world based on what I've learned about how it works. In other words, based on what I've learned about what causes what, what the causes of things are. That's uh, the essence um, of, uh, of, of what prediction is all about. So uh, we seek hidden causes. We, see, we want to understand uh, why do um, fruits um, and vegetables ripen at certain times? Uh, why do they um, taste good when they uh, ripen, not taste good when they're green, and etc.? So we learn you know, how to... Uh, how things work so that we can make predictions that will um, lead to satisfactory outcomes for ourselves. Now, it's very easy to do that with regard to fruits and vegetables and seasons of the year and etc. and etc. Um, but there are certain things that there are certain things that it's very hard uh, to find evidence for, to, to find explanations um, from evidence for. Like, for example, um, why am I here? You know, well. You, you, where's the evidence for why I'm here? You can philosophize about it, and you know this is the sort of thing that we're doing right here. Uh, but there are even more difficult questions, like what happens after I die? Um, it's rather an important question. It kind of matters to us. What happens to uh, Am I going to disappear? And so you look at the evidence to be able to um, uh, infer uh, 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 the hidden causes in order to be able to come up with the causal account um, of how um, my existence can be assured. And in this instance, we don't have any evidence. In fact, it is uh, sort of um, of the essence of what death is that we can never come back uh, with the evidence as to what happens after we die. And to the extent that we've died, to that extent, we are not coming back. And so, you know, this is evidence that we simply cannot gather. And uh, nevertheless, the apparatus is there. The apparatus is there for all the good prosaic reasons that I, that I alluded to at the beginning. These basic biological, one needs to learn how to meet one's needs in the world. Therefore, one needs to build up a machinery for inferring hidden causes. That machinery carries on churning out you know, uh, uh, the best guesses that it has, the best hypotheses that it has as to how the world works. And uh, when it comes to these big imponderable questions, we make our best guesses. And this is what the questioner is referring to when they say we make stuff up. You know, we have all of these uh, um, myths and uh, delusions and confabulations and whatnot that are referred to there. Those are the best guesses that we can come to. Remember that when I say that our needs are represented by feelings and that these feelings are the problems that we then need to solve in the outside world, think about the instance of death of mortality. What is the feeling that it generates? It generates panic. You know, it's like, oh my gosh, you know, what's going to happen? And uh, the feelings then intend toward objects. You've got to find ideas. You've got to find representations that will manage these feelings. Um, and in the case of death, there are no representations to be had, as I say. And so uh, we come up with what uh, uh, the questioner has described 
as myths and religions and whatnot. Now, it's important to, to uh, emphasize, I've said why we have uh, a need for this and why the machinery of our brains does this. Um, but um, it, it, I don't want to leave you with the impression that uh, this means that the conclusions that we've come to are worthless. They're the best conclusions that our various cultures and civilizations have been able to, um, have been able to gather. The only essential difference between that and science is that there is no ultimate possibility of testing the predictions arising from that sort of hypothesis um, of formation. And that means that those sorts of predictions are outside of science. They fall outside of science because they are not testable. That doesn't mean they're worthless. Uh, I think that we really do need uh, to find explanations for these things uh, because that's how we are made, um, as, I, as I'm saying. Um, the, the, those explanations serve us well then. Uh, but uh, we have to recognize that science has limits. Science cannot speak um, to every question.